I have a, a letter from Wendy who wrote in, and she says, Our kitchen sink, we're on our third faucet. Each one... Each one we purchase seems to cause water to splash all over the place, especially behind the faucet on our backsplash wall. As you can see here, to avoid the constantly pulling where I have placed ceramic coasters to prevent the wall from going, the water from going into the wall. Could it be that our faucet is too high for our sinks? Well, take a look at her photo. And I always love this when you send me photos. So she's got a double stainless steel sink with a flat bottom. Now, unfortunately, she didn't back up enough to show me the faucet itself to see what it looks like. But it is true that if this faucet squirts straight down to a flat bottom sink, it could bounce back up. But now I want to look at one other thing. Any faucet that sprays water down on this dish will bounce it back on the wall. And so... You have to see, okay, if I'm going to have a hard spray close to the wall, I'll probably have things going all over the place. But we, we have some solutions for this, so let's take a look. Here's her next picture she sent. That's her backsplash. Now, these tiles that she set down back here trying to back it up, if you take a look, they're not sealed, they're not grouted, and if water got on them, it would only go down back under the sink or in towards the wall anyway. This one might actually do some good because it's sitting on the stainless steel. So if she actually had like a long piece of something sit on the stainless steel, that deflector could throw the water back into the sink. But let's see about solving the problem instead of keep on buying, buying, buying faucets as we're going. What we want to do is look at what's on the end of the faucet. And that's really the key thing. Here I googled swivel faucet aerator images and just to show you how easy it is to find a whole range of first of all swivel faucets that go in different directions so it means if the faucet that she has is going straight down in the sink by putting a swivel on it i could push it out a little bit push it away or i could even push it back towards the the back side of the sink and what would that do well by going back to the back side of the sink your water would be bouncing forward not backwards. But the other thing to notice, look at this one right here. You see how it's kind of looks soft and then this one is hard and there's a whole bunch of them like that. This one, look at how it has great big drops. When those big drops hit, they're soft and they don't splash. When you get a hard spray like this one, that will bounce back on anything. And so this is the one that makes that real splashing effect all over the kitchen. And so you may want to look for one. Here's one that's even a flexible one. So you can imagine, and here's one, you pivot it and you go from a strong spray to this soft spray. And by aerating more and making it so they come out with sort of large droplets, the splash is very different. If you've ever been in one of those waterfall showers and actually a lot of water comes in, you think, oh, it's not even pushing hard. How is it going to do it? It's because it has great big droplets. That's, they've engineered it. So a lot of water is in every drop and it just falls by gravity. It's not being pushed by the pressure of the plumbing system. And that's why you don't get a stimulating shower with that, but you do get a lot of water. And here, if you could cut out the stimulation of that or have an adjustable one, so only when you know you're going to need it because you really want to spray some stuff off of a plate, well, then you do that, but you pay attention to the angle so it doesn't go into the back. So you might not have to keep on buying faucets. Just change the aerator. And one of the things you want to do is unscrew the end of your air, your faucet. Now, they all have a little filter there, little screens to stop things from coming through. Take that to the store with you when you're looking for a new one, and that way you know exactly what type of thread you have that you need to go in. And if the aerator you have isn't the right size or that you want to buy is not the right size, you ask the guy in the plumbing, can you give me an adapter that will change from one thread to another thread and make them both fit? So that would give you a lot more. Now, Wendy had more that she asked. She said, also, <clears throat> we get third degree burns when we turn just the hot water faucet on. And after washing a whole set of pots and pans, we notice the hot water goes from being scalding to almost no cold water needed anymore. So they don't have a lot of hot water. <clears throat> My husband has tried lowering the temperature on the heat tank, but then we notice in the shower we're not able to get water to get it hotter. 
So we have the same problem with the bathroom sink, and the same thing goes on. You're, we're worried about guests getting scalded. Well, there's some interesting things that have happened. First of all, tank maintenance. If you go to my website, there's a hot water tank ma maintenance entry. And if you look at this picture in detail, look at the bottom. You see this junk accumulating? It's called sediment, including collecting in the bottom of the tank. I have actually opened tanks, sawed into them, and found it more than halfway up to the top. When it starts to accumulate that heavily, for whatever reason, <clears throat> there's less water available. It's like you have a smaller tank. And that's part of why you try to get it really hot, and then it doesn't last long, because you don't have a whole tank full. So with her indication that she can't keep it hot for a shower for a long time, that tells me that she's probably going to have to buy a new hot water tank unless she can clean it out. You see, you should actually open this valve. They say every year, nobody does it, you should, <laughs> down here and flush it out once a year to make sure that it's flowing clean and that way you won't be collecting sediment all the time up here. If you wait and it's halfway full and you force the water through, what I discovered is that it makes a tunnel through the sediment doesn't give you a better hot water tank. It just finds a way to make you think it's flowing clean. When we cut that one open, that's when we found it was half full, but we had this nice little channel of water going straight through. So <clears throat> tank maintenance is an important thing. Critical temperatures. Here's another entry you might want to look at, and these are all in those links. Critical temperatures for household appliance, hot water heaters. The factory setting is usually 66 degrees. That's actually enough to scald someone. So now legislation, at least in Ontario, requires mixing valves that will mix the cold water with the hot so the temperature of the faucet can never hurt a child or an elderly. Okay, now why don't we just turn down the hot water tank? Well, if the hot water tank actually gets too cold, you grow bacteria like Legionnaire's disease. And one of the problems is that if you turn a electric hot water tank down too much, the bottom of the tank is much cooler than the top, always. And therefore, you could still develop Legionnaire's disease down here. A gas hot water tank boils it up so often that you're allowed to make that a little bit more. So for instance, a gas hot water heater must be set no lower than 50 degrees. <laughs> Did we drop out totally? Yeah, okay, we're back. Okay, we're back. We dropped out totally. That was a power outing on our end, <laughs> and we had to throw in some battery power here to get that going again. Okay, sorry about that. I hope you stayed with us and that you didn't uh, break your computer trying to get it working. <laughs> so we're back to hot water tanks and about the temperatures. Gas hot water tanks must be set no lower than 50 degrees Celsius or 120 Fahrenheit, and electric, no lower than 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit. And those are designed to keep them from growing bacteria. So what do we do if we have a hot water tank that's not full of sediment, but it's too hot, but we can't turn it down to where we control it? Well, what they do in, with the Ontario legislation is that they use a thing like this, if we can just get to it here, here we go. They put a thing called a tempering valve in the line. So here's your hot water tank. This is the overflow over here. Cold water supply comes in here to the tank. It could come in the bottom, top, doesn't matter. But they run a line off to this valve. The hot water runs out to your kitchen, laundry fixtures, and things like that. And there's a line that comes off here into the tempering valve. And now the tempering valve sends the water out to the faucets in the bathroom, sometimes in the kitchen any place where we're worried about scalding. And <clears throat> that tempering valve says, if the hot water from the, from the tank is too hot, 
will add cold water to it. If you look in the computer, we'll add cold water from here to the hot water, and we'll make sure this is going out 50 degrees max. And then at the faucet, you adjust the hot and cold. But it means that even if you go all the way hot, you can't get burned. And that tempering valve, it's not a national cold situ situation. It may eventually be. For the moment, it's in Ontario. But you can buy them everywhere. Plumbers know what they are. And you could have one put in right back at the hot water tank. And so then it runs off on the line going up there to the, uh, the kitchen. They could actually put it any place where they have a convenient connection that isolates those bathroom fixtures, particularly the bathroom fixtures, so you don't have kids going up there and burning themselves. It was actually initiated by a, a kid protection group. So, Wendy, I hope that helps you to get things straightened out uh, and working. Mm -hmm.